So what makes an owl an owl and not just a bird? Um, the sort of definition is they're mostly solitary, they live on their own. They're nocturnal birds of prey, so they are, they're hunters. Um, they generally have an upright stance, so when you see them, they normally look like they're just uh, standing up all the time. They generally are pretty big, they have a broad head, they have binocular vision, which we'll talk about, um, binaural hearing, which we'll also talk about, sharp talons, um, unlike that pug that I see that doesn't have sharp talons at all, um, and feathers adapt for silent light, which we're also going to talk about because it is super interesting. So there are a couple exceptions. There is the dineural northern hawk owl, which is an owl, but it doesn't, it's not nocturnal, it's diurnal, so it um, hangs out in the day. Um, well, I guess it hunts during the day and hangs out at night. Uh, and there's burrowing owls that uh, live in adorable groups. Um, other than the burrowing owls, most other owls do live in holes and trees, they live, they live in nests, um, they, uh, they make their, their habitats up in the canopy, which is nice. A group of owls is called a parliament, which is pretty adorable, um, and that comes from, there's a lot of folklore and there's a lot of just thoughts behind how smart owls are, and they are very, very smart, that is true. Um, but um, the ideas in folklore and in stories were that the owls were like the smartest of all birds and so all of them if they were together they would be in a parliament and they would all be talking with each other about probably about how smart they are and how delicious mice are to eat. Um, so they are nocturnal uh, like I said so that means they do uh, they sleep during the day and they hunt during the evenings and at night. They have better night vision than we do, but they can't see totally in the dark. They do need to have some light um, uh, because, um, yeah, they have, they have uh, very good eyes, but not like super eyes. Um, so they have binocular vision, which means they have two, uh, they have two eyes, which we can see from the owls on our screens. Um, they are facing the same way, um, but they don't move at all. And so binocular vision is the same way that, that we see, that we look at something straight on, but the way that, um, that our brain sort of interprets what we're seeing, we can see a 3D image with everything that's coming at us. Um, it's important to know because later I'm gonna talk a lot about um, how they understand the world around them. They have binaural hearing, which um, I wrote down as heading, but that is incorrect, it's actually hearing, um, and it means that they hear from both of their ears. And again, super interesting for later. Um, now, just like you and me, they have two eyes, but different from both of us. Um, we can move our eyes around, and we have this huge plane of peripheral, peripheral vision, because we can move our eyes around and you know, without moving our heads, we can look over and, and see what's around us. They can't do this. They have, their eyes are um, in fixed sockets, and so they can move their head around quite a lot. Not all the way around, not 360 degrees, but if you can imagine, 270 degrees. So it's quite a lot. It's not all the way around, but it is, it's a lot for, for uh, any animal. Um, they have uh, special tendons and blood vessels that are in their necks, and they have 14 vertebrae in their necks. Remember, we only have seven, like most mammals. And so with that many vertebrae in their neck, they can like, you know, move their heads around a little bit more than we can. And they're, they're pretty flexible. They do a lot of, uh, of moving on like one plane, but then they also move their head around to sort of, um, again, understand the world a little bit more, but we are going to about that. Um, now, the, I don't know where I am. So owl's hearing is very sophisticated, like I said. Um, now, what they do, it, now this is really important because they do so much hunting at night and they have pretty good eyesight, but at night, even if you have excellent eyesight, it's gonna be difficult. Remember, bats hunt at night as well. And they have okay eyesight, but they use sonar. 
So if you can't use sonar, you can't really see things, what are you going to do? You're going to try to hear lots and lots of stuff. And so what, um, what owls do is they pick up different cues from each of their ears. So they're hearing from both ears. And they are so sophisticated, they, um, they're able to know if they hear a noise in this direction, they're going to know that they have to like point their head just a little bit more. Or that happens with us. If you hear someone yelling in this direction, you go, oh yeah, for sure. I, you know, I should turn my head to see who's yelling at me. Or I should, you know, ignore them sometimes. Um, but owls will know, you know, even before we would, oh, there's something going on over here. Something maybe delicious. Um, they, uh, so, so like I said, they, they pick up cues from their ears and what they normally hear is they norm, uh, depending on what they are interested in eating, they will hear like scuffling under leaves or like rustling and they'll go, hmm, that might be something I want to eat. Um, they do eat everything from earthworms and grasshoppers to snakes and mice and voles. Um, some owls we'll talk about also uh eat fish um so those would be interesting to listen to um but so if an animal can hear anything like from a worm um or like a cricket then they must be very good at hearing but how are they so good at hearing is it just that they have very cool ears no they have a big old face and the big old face is actually called a facial disc now it's made of feathers that goes all the way around their face and it acts like a satellite or like a radar. So it goes all the way around. Um, it's located, uh, their ears, sorry, are located behind their eyes, just like us, but the ears are on the inside of their plate. And so they have these special feathers that go all the way around, like you can, you can see. Uh, when you look at, when I show you pictures later of an owl, you look at an owl, you'll notice that they have these really round faces. And that's because their face is taking in all the sound waves and like bringing it to their ears. So they're able to like hear, oh, that is coming from this direction. Now, another really interesting thing is most owls have asymmetrical ears. Now, what does that mean? It means that they have an ear up here and an ear down here. And it is, um, they are so sensitive when they hear, so their, their facial disc is, uh, is around their face, obviously. And so they hear something from like the top of a tree on the right hand side, they go, oh, I know exactly where that's coming from and can, they can move their whole radar face up and they can zone in on what they want to listen to by just moving their face around. Or, you know, so they have an ear up here and an ear down here. The ear down here um, hears something uh, coming from the forest floor and they go, oh wait, I should move my radar down there to get as many, um, as much sound as possible coming at my face so I can, uh, so I can hear it. Another really amazing thing is they can control the shape of their facial disc by using their facial muscles. So it's sort of like when we squint, when we want to see something from far away, they're like, they're squinting their face so they can hear something, which I think is so neat. They're squinting and going, huh? What's that? This is a delicious meal. Another amazing thing is their bill, um, their beak is actually pointed downwards. And so there is even more surface for the sound waves to collect on the disc. Yeah, perfect, just like that. And so everything about their face is trying to get as much sound waves as possible, which is pretty neat. So if you see a picture of an owl and it looks like they're lopsided, they kind of are. That's not a mistake. That's because their, um, their, uh, their ear asymmetry, you can actually see it sometimes based on uh, what they're doing with their, with their discs. So these owls, uh, like I said, so they have super sensitive ears. And so they generally listen to leaves or foliage or sometimes snowy owls will listen to the crunching of snow. And they'll be able to like hear just a little bit of a crunch and they'll go, whoosh, 
that is where a delicious thing lives and I'm going to eat it. Um, ba, 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 ba. So owls, this is super, super interesting. Owls can detect the left and right time difference in three millionths of a second. So they hear a noise come in and in that time, so like less than that, they know exactly if it's coming from this ear or coming from that ear. So that is how, that's how clever they are. And that's how good they are at hunting. They hear something and they're like, oh, yeah, no, exactly. I'm going to go that direction. So that's why it's quite important that they have these huge discs. They have this asymmetry in their ears because everything is understanding the world in this sort of 3D way. They can see it, but hearing much better, much, much better. Um, so there's also a very super interesting thing that I read, like everything, every time I'm on animal chat time, like here's another interesting thing, everything is cool. So the area in the brain that's associated with hearing, it is super complex in, you know, everything that can hear because your brain is complex, but it is much more complex in an owl's brains compared to anything else because they use hearing so much more than other animals. Um, so a barn owl, the part in their brain that does all the hearing, has 95,000 neurons, just a lot of goop in the brain, but that is three times more than a crow. So they're the part of their brain that needs to like really understand what they're hearing and do it like a really good job at, at knowing what they're hearing is three times more powerful kind of than a crow. And crows are super smart and interesting and they do tons of talking with each other and they have really interesting language, but the owls need to hear every little tiny quiet whisper and they need to know exactly where it's coming from. So they have to have really powerful um, hearing parts of their brain. Um, and so they're able to hear if something's hiding or if it's running and so they can point that facial disc towards it. Um, like I said, they are predators. They do eat meat, anything from mice and worms, really big fish. Um, a really interesting thing about all birds that eat fish is the way they carry the, the fish. Um, so, uh, every time an animal does something, they want to do it without um, spending a lot of energy doing it. So if they're flying with a fish in their talons, that's not as aerodynamic as it could be. And so what they do is they put the fish in their talons so it's pointed in the way that they're going. So it's more aerodynamic. So kind of like they have like a fish skateboard. Next time you see a, uh, a bird carrying a fish, you will think it is a skateboard. You're welcome. Now the ear tufts, someone did ask if those were ears. They are not. Um, they don't hear out of their little tufts. They just look cool. They are to show off to other um, to, to other owls, look how big and cool and predatory I am. Leave me alone, this is my tree. And it is also to show off to potential mates, look how cool this is. Kind of like, you know, when we do our hair, they're just doing their tufts. Um, so they are just display feathers. Now, owls are very farsighted, which is really interesting. So they're able to see quite far away. They do a really good job at, um, at pointing their facial discs hearing things and then locking in and looking at things, but they can't see anything really, really close. So they have really sensitive little whiskers that help them detect things at close range. So basically when they're eating, they have these little whiskers saying, there is more fruit there. Do not worry. Now the biggest animal, nope, the biggest owl uh, on earth is the Blakiston fish owl. It is Super interesting. It does such a cool job at hunting. So when we think about owls hunting, we think about them in a tree. We think about them placing their facial disc in the way of a mouse and they swoop down through the trees and then they grab something. That is most owls, but not the Blakiston fish owl. This little guy, big guy, lives in northern Russia and Japan. They eat fish. Very good. Instead of swooping down, what they do is they, they swoop down to the water's edge and they go on 
a rock or on a branch or sometimes just on the shallow edge of, uh, of a river and they just wait and they look down and they wait to hear and see fish in the water. Once they do, they just hop into the shallow, they're very shallow uh, streams and rivers that they, uh, they, they fish in. And that is really, really interesting because you see them just like kind of hop, sort of like a cat, but with their talons. So they just like hop into the stream and just like get a fish that way. And then they will fly away with it like your fish skateboard. Um, and so it, uh, it's pretty amazing. You can see, uh, you can see them on YouTube. If you look at world's biggest owl um, fishing, you'll see many videos of it. And I highly recommend it. It's very neat. Um, now they eat pretty big fish, salmon, pike, sometimes lamprey, uh, sometimes um, uh, uh, leeches, uh, if, if they are particularly hungry, also crayfish and things like that. But how big are they? I'm happy that you asked. So males can weigh between 2.9 to 3.6 um, kilograms, which is about five and a half to six, or yeah, six and a half to eight pounds. But then the females, are about 4.6 kilograms, which is about 10 pounds. Most female uh, owls are bigger than males, and these ones are actually 25% bigger. So they're they're quite a bit bigger. Now that seems like it's like it's pretty big, but remember that owls do have, or all birds have um, have very um, uh, uh, not hollow, um, but they have very light bones. And so if you look at how much something weighs, it's not going to exactly show you how big they are. So um, how big are they? They're about 60 to 72 centimeters, 24 to 20, uh, 28 inches in total length, which is pretty big, but their wingspan is the nutty bit because their wingspan is about 190 centimeters, which is about six feet. That's how big this is. It is more than me tall. That is the wingspan of this owl, which is so big. So they don't seem like they're only eight pounds, but they have huge wings. And the wings of an owl are actually really important for their silent flight. But I will obviously tell you about that later. Now, what's the smallest owl? Just told you about a really big guy. The smallest owl is aptly named Elf Owl. Very cute. Uh, they're about, they're less than six inches, which is about 15 centimeters, so smaller than a, uh, a ruler, and they live, or they weigh about 41 grams, which is about, they weigh the same as a golf ball, so they're, they're quite little. They live in um, the southwest of America, they live in hollow trees, and they eat uh, little, little insects like worms and crickets. Now, owls, um, Owls really need to be quiet when they are, uh, when they're flying for two reasons. They don't want to disturb their prey, but also if they're very loud when they flap their wings, then they can't hear their prey. An amazing thing that owls do when they lock into a sound, they put their facial discs in that direction and they fly still with their facial discs um, in the same direction of their prey. So if they're making tons of noises, they're not going to be able to hear if the uh, mouse or something is scurrying away or if it's hiding under, um, under some branches. So it's, it's pretty interesting that they have adapted this way that they are able to um, have almost, almost perfectly silent flight. So how? One of the things is they do have these really, really big wings. They don't have to flap their wings all the time. They flap them a few times and they do a lot of gliding towards, um, towards the, their prey. Gliding is a lot, um, a lot quieter than flapping. Have you ever heard like a dove or a pigeon? You know, flapping can be quite loud. Very lovely, but loud. But then the really neat thing and the really amazing adaptation they have is um, their feathers they have two types of feathers on their wings. The feathers on the front of their wings 
um, have like a comb like or like sort of if you looked at it, it was a, uh, it would be like a microscopic knife. So they have these little variations on them. Um, and so what that does is it makes them a little more jagged than smooth, but it means that there's it breaks up the swooshing noise that you would get from like a big flap of the wing. If you take something that if you were to take a phantom uh, magnet and you were to put it against your ear, you would really super be able to hear the whoosh, whoosh, whoosh from it because it's quite, quite uh, straight and flat. But if you were to take, this isn't great, but if you're going to take your hand, you can go whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. And you're still going to hear it, but it's not as loud as something that is flat. So what you're actually doing is you're taking a big stream of air, a big stream of air, and you're cutting it down into a whole bunch of little streams of air. And the littler the stream of air, the less noise it's going to make. So having that on the front end of the, um, of the wing of the owl is going to make lots of little streams of air. But then the back end of the wing is covered in little downy feathers. And so these downy feathers are velvety and they're really poofy, but they absorb the noise that the front of the wing, uh, wing is producing. So it's super interesting. So again, when they actually need to flap, there's less noise in the front of their wing. It's being absorbed. And so they can really focus, focus their, uh, their facial uh, disc on what they need to hear. And they're not hearing a bunch of like flapping in the background. So it's pretty interesting, like everything. So let's look at some pictures of owls. Owl. This is a barred owl, and this is an excellent representation of their facial disc. So you can see all of like the the whole front of this owl is used to just be like a giant ear, a giant satellite or radar. You can also see that its beak is pointed down. So it's not uh, it's not forward like you would see uh, you see other beaks, and so it's also absorbing all of this sound, so we can know exactly where um, where the the prey is. You can also see at the very bottom of the pictures they have quite big talons, um, which they can use to uh, to hunt. This is another lovely picture of not such a huge um, facial disc. This is a great horned owl, but you can still see how it does have a disc. It is using that, um, using its face to hear. But you can see these lovely little puffs, uh, little tufts at the, uh, the top of their head. And like I said, not ears, just super cute. But don't tell them that, they look like super rad. Here is, um, here is uh, the same owl flying. And you can see that it's put its tufts down to fly. It's, used, it's, uh, its head is quite far forward. And its disc is, um, is, is kind of fully engaged. You can see like it's definitely, definitely listening for something, this big great horned owl. Here is um, not a great horned owl. But an owl that is definitely listening to me, uh, you can tell because it's moved its whole face, even in flight, they can move, uh, they can move their face around to listen to everything that's going on. You can also see its beautiful feathers, the very top of its wing. You can see how there's uh, some really downy um, pieces of feathers on the back of the wing and on the front, they, uh, they, they do sort of look like a comb. So they're their tiny little breaks in the feathers um, are going to really cut down on, on all that sound it's going to make when it, is, um, uh, when it is flapping. But you can also see how big its wings are and how it doesn't need to flap so much. You can do a lot of, of gliding. Here is a barn owl, and it also has a lovely representation of, uh, of a facial disc. Um, and also how its nose, uh, its beak, sorry, is pointed down. Um, so you can see they're very good at hearing. <laughs> I don't know if I've said that enough about owls. And, uh, and here is just uh, a little owl um, 
it looks like a little saw wet and I forgot to look up what type of owl it would be. Um, but owls are the colors they are, so they can be camouflaged. And so if you um, were in the middle of the day um, walking through a forest, you probably wouldn't notice this owl because it looks like it's bark, it's the rest of this tree. Um, same with snowy owls, they change color in winter and in summer based on um, you know their surroundings and where they are. So in the winter they are very very white and in the summer they uh, they have more of a gray white plumage. Um, do owls have any predators? Yes, yes. So owls, because there's 200 different species of owls and they live everywhere on earth but Antarctica, um, there are many different predators. And so in, um, in like the neotropics in, um, in South America and Latin America, um, there are like pythons that will eat, the, uh, eat owls. Um, bigger birds will eat them, um, as well as things like jaguars, um, you know, lots, lots of things like that. Um, oftentimes the, the problem or the things that eat owls uh, will try to prey on the little ones that are still in the nest. And so sometimes you will see like monkeys will eat, will go into uh, the trees to eat little owls um, or raccoons will in, uh, in Canada and America. Um, it really, it really does depend. And, you know, it is just, it shows you just how opportunistic nature is. If they're, um, if you are, an animal that also likes to eat meat and you see something just sitting there, you'll go, okay, I will have that. Birch has a question. He has his hand up. Um, what different species of owls live in Alberta? Cool. What species of owls live in Alberta? That is an excellent question. Um, I know for sure um, that depending I said that with a lot of um, clarity and then uh, kind of trailed off. So there are barred owls that live in Alberta. There are snowy owls. Um, there are also sawwit owls that live uh, in some places in Alberta. Normally sawwit owls live closer to big, uh, um, big parts of water uh, like Toronto Island or Vancouver Island. Um, but in Alberta, you do get um, lots of owls in the boreal forest, so um, very close to where you are. Lots of barred owls. There are barn owls as well in Alberta. Um, if you went out walking at night, you would hear lots and lots of animals and you probably wouldn't hear a lot of different owl calls, but you'd probably be really surprised with how many owls you do hear. Right. Is it possible that we heard a great horned outside? We heard something very loud. Yeah, yeah, you definitely have great horned owls. I should have said that. Those are very cool. Um, yeah, you definitely could hear that, especially in areas, um, you know, around the boreal forest where there are um, red squirrels or voles or little mice and things like that. Great horned owls definitely fly in that area and, um, and will want to have a small snack. So do owls mate for life? Oh my goodness. Um, they do not. So typically owls do live by themselves. And so mama owls, um, there are some that, uh, that co-parent. Um, there are some mom owls that just parent on their own. But the burrowing owls uh, uh, that, I, that I mentioned at the very start, they live in whole groups. And so those are really cool um, because they, they burrow, they live in, in burrows uh, underground, sort of like um, prairie dogs or, um, or you know, even snakes live, <laughs> live in places like that. Um, and they live in uh, pretty big parliaments, which is neat. Um, but uh, they, are not, they are not so romantic. Um, they don't mate for life. They do, um, they will have um, lots of friends with each other. Um, where do owls live? So specifically, owls generally live in trees. Um, they live in like the hollowed out portions of trees. They really like to, um, to be in areas 
that can be very, very dark during the day because they do sleep during the day. So they want to have like, um, you know, blackout curtains. And so a, a hollowed out tree is the best. Uh, some owls will make kind of nests that um, that uh, are in these hollowed out areas. Um, mostly they do live in trees, um, but they live on every continent in the world except for Antarctica. Um, and the size of the owl actually really matters to the size of the tree. And so the really big, the Blakiston's um, fish owl actually needs to live in really, really big trees. And so, like I always say, um, we really need to protect our old growth trees and old growth forests because that's where these animals really, you know, they like to live, but that's where they do live. And so the bigger the trees, the older the trees, more animals will live there. We want to protect them.